Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, SolidWorks simulation. Simulation is what uh, SolidWorks calls their FEA package. First example we're going to look at is uh, uniform stress di distribution over a cylindrical rod that uh, is loaded in tension. All right, let's uh, start off in SolidWorks and create a part. Cylindrical cross section. Diameter two inches. And length of ten inches, let's say. Okay, so we have our part. Um, now we want to try to load it. Um, in order to do that, we need to uh, do a, a static study. And you need to make sure that you have your tools loaded. So go to Tools, Add-ins, and you want SolidWorks Simulation checked uh, over here so that it's active and then over here so that you have it on startup. Okay, so then you come down here to the motion study area, usually that's there. Okay, so you come down here and then you say create new simulation study. Um, So static study is what I'll create. So I'm ready to go here. Um, first thing you want to do is uh, you want to create a fixture. So I'm going to go around to the back side and I'm going to say fix geometry um, this back face. So you see what it does is it puts these green anchors on here to give you the indication that that face is fixed. So we're looking good there. So say OK. Um, next thing you want to do is uh, add a load. So I'm going to add a force and I'm going to put it on that face and let it be normal to the face. Uh, but I want to reverse the direction because I want to stretch it and I also want to make it uh, 10,000 pounds. Okay, so that looks good. Right. So we've got it fixtured. We've got it loaded. Um, it's not going to be happy here. I need to set up a material. So let me go back here. And I'm going to edit material, and I'm going to say it's uh, 1020. Let's do 1020 cold rolled. Okay, so yield strength of about 51 kpsi. So let's pick that one. I'm going to update. All right, so it has a material. We've got it fixtured. Uh, we've got a load on it. I think we're ready to run the, uh, the simulation. So let's see what happens. Okay. So it um, automatically generates a three-dimensional stress plot for von Mises. It gives me von Mises and PSI. It gives me a displacement maximum displacement of course it's a tie rod so maximum displacement uh, is going to be over here on the right end that's being stretched away from the fixed uh, end it's giving it to me in inches looks like it's about one mil one thousandths of an inch okay and of course I have strain so these are three-dimensional plots that uh, are done in color 
So von Mises is a is a positive value. The minimum in blue is 1600 psi. The maximum in red is about 3800 psi. So let's take a peek here at what we've got. If you look around the back side, that's where the minimum is around the middle because that's a, a actually fixed. So um, the area there uh, right at that face is not really seeing anything. Around the perimeter, there's actually a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red, red being the max. So this is an interesting situation. That's near the boundary. That's where it's fixtured. So SolidWorks is doing is running a finite element analysis of this based on how the boundary is is fixed. Um, so this is a pretty decent simulation. It could very well be what actually happens when you think about uh, uh, your class and mechanics and material materials uh, this is actually a uniform loaded uh, scenario however we're not really seeing a uniform load we've got uh, all kinds of colors ranging from uh, blue at 1600 up to red at 3700 uh, but let's think about uh, what the what the uniform stress might be and see where that is in this uh, plot Okay, theoretically, if you go back and create uh, yourself an Excel file here, for example, and you put in the, the diameter of 2, um, then you calculate the area based on that. Um, you can poke around here and see uh, what I have for area. Area is pi times d squared over 4. What I did, actually, instead of using b4, uh, column B, row 4 for my D. I've actually redefined this cell to, to have the name D in the name box so that when I go in the area I can just use D. Um, so D, so the area here is uh, of course equal to pi because my diameter is 2 inches in this example. So I've put my force at 10,000. I've put my length at 10. I put my units up here so that I can keep track of that. My Young's modulus for steel is 30 million. I'm going to have there. I've renamed this cell to be E instead of F4. Uh, so now, when I calculate my K, the theoretical model for, for stiffness is E times A over L. So I've got that as about 9.4 million pound force per inch. If I go calculate my sigma, theoretically, it's just uh, force divided by area. Force is 10,000 pounds, and area is uh, pi, pi square inches. So if I look at my sigma uniformly in our mechanics and materials class, we should have uh, about 3183 uh, pound force per square inch. Okay, that's what we should have. The deflection here, which is F divided by K, um, I F, the F is 10,000 pound force. So if you divide by the stiffness K, um, ordinarily I would have that in inch, but I'm going ahead. I'm going to go ahead and show it in mil. So I take that thousand. So again, about one mil, a little bit over one mil. So theoretically, that's what I should be getting in this scenario. Now let's go back and take a look at what SolidWorks has, has is going to give us. Um tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and see if I can show. I don't want to see the deform shape. I want to be able to poke around in there. So now I've got my 3D, 3D, three-dimensional color plot shown on the undeformed shape. So you can go back. You can see where we've stretched out there. Um, if you look at color-wise, that uh, 30 was at 3183-ish, so, so that should be kind of a dark yellow. Most of the rod does have that color. It'd be nice to kind of look interior to the rod to see what it is. Um, again, back here on the back side where it is grounded, we have uh, really all colors. We've got the blue. We've got um, we've got some green. Um, we've got some of that. Uh, 
yellow, we've got the red going all the way up. So um, the uniform, the theory for the uniform stress, that is, is correct as long as you are away from uh, where it's fixtured. And uh, that, that is a principle called St. Venet's principle. So it's something you should keep in mind. So the, the, the FEA um, is probably more accurate to reality, but the theoretical model is accurate as well. It's just, it, it, you just have to consider the St. Venet's principle. So let's see how we can poke around at uh, what's going on inside the rod. What we can do is try to turn on our section clipping. And of course it comes up uh, and not the right uh, plane. So what I do is I select uh, the right plane. Okay. Um, the, the current location now where I've got the cut is uh, right at the edge where we don't want to be. We kind of want to step in. We want to step into a position that is within the the actual rod and away from from the from the fixed end. Okay, so section wise, we're looking good. So I have a section. Look at the color. Is it around thirty one eighty three? Yeah, it's pretty close in that color. But we can actually probe here and see, take a number of measurements on this cross section. Let's take a few and see what we get. So I've taken uh, seven measurements. Uh, the average is 3177. They're all pretty close to 3177. So let me go stick that in 3177 into what the SolidWorks is seeing. Okay. So looking at relative error, that would be the difference here, which is what six divided by the absolute value of the difference uh, divided by the true value. And I'm going to say the true value here is theoretical. So that is a uh, 0.2% uh, relative difference there, relative error. It's quite quite a good um, agreement. So that's that one. So that looks good. So I'm feeling pretty good about the model, theoretical model, and uh, as well as uh, how SolidWorks is showing it. Um, here again, we've got our displacement. Let's go turn off the deformed shape, and let's see what we have. Uh, of course, it's going to be uniformly stretching from effectively zero at where it's fixed and as you progress down the rod the the end of the rod the 10 inch uh, area where the force is applied actually comes out um, at uh, 1.064 times 10 to the minus 3 so that's 1.064 mils so let's stick that in uh, over here 1.064 mils and look at how it varies with respect to the theoretical. Very, very close. You can look at uh, look at, at the difference of uh, three thousandths of a mil divided by a mil. So it's about 0.3% difference. So that's uh, quite quite a good um, agreement there. So that's, uh, those are some things we can do. Um, let's take a look at results and try to do a different plot. Let's do a different stress plot. <clears throat> the first one that comes up nominally is von Mises. But uh, let me turn off the form shape. I'm going to come in and show you how to do a normal stress in the x direction because that should really be the same. Normal stress in the x we should be looking at uh, predominantly a normal stress in this scenario because that's how we're stretching it uniformly. Um, right. So we should be, now the colors have changed on us a little bit. Uh, one thing I could do is go and change the chart options. Go to basically redefine 
uh, what the colors are. It could start. I think it was 1600 that the low value was blue, and I think the high value was about 3800 order of magnitude. So um, that would get us uh, back um, in sync with what we had uh, for von Mises. The St. Venet um, area here is actually going to give us uh, different uh, colors in this scenario, but if we were to go in and do a section plot here, we should see the same kinds of colors that we saw before and should get about that 3177 value. Pretty good. So that's uh, one thing we could do. Another thing we could do is we could come in here and do a factor safety plot. Step one of three. We're going to just do, uh, we only have the one body. Uh, let's take a look at what our theories are. This should look familiar. We could uh, use uh, max von Mises stress. That would be distortion energy. We could use max shear stress uh, or Tresca. The max shear stress is uh, one we're very familiar with. Should be very familiar with this. Um, let's use distortion energy. We're going to use yield strength because it's a ductile material, about 51 kpsi. And we'll probably play around a little bit with the colors, so let's stick with that. Alright, so factor safety is showing us a high of 31 in the blue area. Let's see where that is. Of course, blue is where there's no von Mises stress, no distortion. And most of the, most of it is, most of it is in this lower area here, 13, 16 ish. Let's see, um, let's go in and look at our theory, what we might expect. If I put in my yield strength in pound force per square inch, 51,000, I might uh, be able to calculate my uh, distortion energy factor of safety as 51,000 divided by uh, what would be the Mont von Mises stress, uh, about that. So it looks like it's about um, 16 factor of safety. Um, because of the loading here, the uniform loading, the distortion energy is actually equal to the max shear stress uh, because there's really only one principal stress here at, at play. All right, so 16 uh, is, what, uh, is what we're looking at. So that looks like about right. Let's uh, take a look at a section. Um, Right, of course, we've got the wrong section. Let's go ahead and step out. So we can get into the uniform area. Let's see what our probe tells us. So, right at 16, just as we predicted. Let's see, let's take a look uh, a little bit more of the theory here, edit definition. So, uh, as I said, uh, for this type of loading, the von Mises and the max shear stress are actually going to be equal. That's both of those for ductile materials, as you know. Max uh, Coulomb stress, now that would be if it were a brittle material, uh, which is, this is not. The max normal stress is also in Chapter 5 of Shigley. This is the dangerous one that uh, we don't use. So if it were brittle, we could use max Coulomb. <clears throat> but, um, it, it, of course, it is ductile, so uh, the Max von Mises would work here. Um, 
this should this should make you what I've shown you here should make you very comfortable you, if you think about it uh, we've got uh, the theoretical modeling that we've learned in mechanics and materials and also uh, now in mechanical design we've got that theoretical model good foundation there and we're able to show uh, with SolidWorks uh, the SolidWorks simulation where it's doing a finite element analysis of it, which is very close to what would we, we would get experimentally, we're able to show a good correlation between the solid works uh, based on FEA and, and experiment with our theoretical model. So uh, that is very powerful and makes us uh, very valuable to be able to do that. Next, I want to take the example and see what happens if we subject the cylindrical rod to bending. We're going to look at a cantilever loading where we're going to put uh, F at uh, 1,000 pounds. <clears throat> and we're going to look uh, at a uh, uh, 0.2 inch offset uh, from where it's built in. So that's going to, for the 10 inch long cylindrical rod that's going to create a moment of 9800 uh, inch pounds and we're going to use the common uh, cantilever stiffness uh, which is 3 times EI over uh, L cubed where I is the second moment of area and of course uh, our theoretical model is going to be MC over I where where our C is of course D over 2 because it's a, a round bar and since it's a round bar, our second moment of area, uh, when substituted, is going to give me a, a bending, a normal bending stress there of uh, 32m over pi d cubed. Then we're going to take a look at SolidWorks, uh, the FEA that it reports, and then we're going to compare them. Okay, before uh, looking at the SolidWorks, I wanted to uh, get an idea of what theoretically uh, the values should be. So for my bending example here, I'm going to use the same dimensions that I had for my for my uh, round bar and uniform tension and just add to it uh, that I'm going to be doing a cantilever load of a thousand pounds and that's going to create a moment um, uh, of 9800 from a position uh, two tenths of an inch from the built in location. That's to avoid the St. Venet's principle. And when I do that, I go ahead and let's poke around here. So I see my sigma, my bending stress, which is going to be a normal stress. That's going to be 32 times M. And I've, I've labeled that as M, that cell. 32M uh, divided by pi d cubed, as I showed you before. And then my stiffness uh, for the deflection at that end of the beam is going to be 3 times EI, and I is pi times D4 over 64, 3 times EI divided by L cubed, as I had said before. So I've got my K uh, set up and ready to go. So then over here, of course, I take my F12, which is my force, the 1,000 pounds, and I'm dividing it by uh, I12, which is the K, and then I'm going to multiply by 1,000 so that I get a, a, an answer in mil. So uh, what I'm looking for is a is a bending stress of about 12 and a half kpsi. I'm going to be looking for a displacement down of about 14 mil. Okay, so let's uh, go take a look at uh, SolidWorks. I've already got things kind of set up here a little bit, and um, I've got the force acting down. I've already run the the uh, the test here and just to see what I mean by it ha being hide this for a second and just poke around here to see how I did this um, so basically you you set a face where you want that force to be applied and then you select a direction um, on this face and the direction I chose was the first one and then I set the thousand pounds and it was actually going the wrong way it was going up but I wanted it to go down so I set it there so that's how you set the force uh, I've anchored it basically the same so uh, let's bring the stress back so this shows um, 
nominally when you first run it it shows a von Mises stress and remember von Mises stress is always positive if you look the blue at the bottom is a positive number and as you go up uh, it goes up to 12,000 so order of magnitude we were looking for 12,000 uh, if you remember back over this page we're looking for about 12 and a half thousand but remember that's at that 2.2 uh, offset Let's, uh, let's see if we can step out that .2 offset. If I do the section clipping, I uh, actually want to go right plane. And I want to step out the .2. No, no. There we go. .2 to kind of see what I have there. So that's where I need to be looking. Um, so the von Mises is showing a zero stress near what would be the neutral axis. That's correct. And then it's showing positive on the top and also positive on the bottom. Remember, this is von Mises. And actually, from the original loading, let me hide this again. From the original loading, we should be seeing tension on top and compression on the bottom. So the von Mises really doesn't show that because it's a positive value. Let's go in and actually edit the definition and change it to SX, which is a normal stress in the X direction. So this is my sigma X, if you will. And that's really what I want to be looking at and uh, be interesting to look at some of these other uh, stresses. But uh, we really want to look at SX uh, right now. So let's do that. And lo and behold, we're looking at a, um, and this, the, this scale here, the, the, the minus 14,000 up to the positive 14,000, that's for the whole beam. And we've uh, probably back in the, in, at where it's built in. Remember, we've stepped out a little bit. But not, at least we're getting the colors that we kind of expect. We've got blue for compression uh, down at the bottom because the bottom's in compression. And we've got the top uh, in red. And uh, that's looking better. That's looking more like what we would want. So let's let's see if we can probe probe around here a little bit and see what the actual values are. So I'm going to try to poke in here, grab some of these top points. There's two of them. As you can see, I'm right at twelve and a half thousand, twelve and a half kpsi. So the average is 12,510, let's say, 12,510. So remember that for a second. I'm going to go down here and poke at the bottom. Clear those. Probe here. Uh, minus 12,6, a little bit higher than we, would, we were thinking. We've got a minus 12,525. Minus 12.6, but in the ballpark of what we were looking for. So that's our stress. We had the, I think it was 12.510 is what we had. So uh, let's go back over here and put in a 12.510 for what the SolidWorks FEA is reporting. And then my relative error in percent is less than half a percent. As you can see, I've taken the absolute value of the difference divided by the theoretical. So that is uh, in percent. So 0.3 percent um, relative error difference. Let's go back and look at displacement and see what that looks like. So for displacement, the tip will will dip down, um, and I've already shown it in mil. It shows up as 14. 0.58 mil, the displacement of the tip. Of course, the the end of the cantilever goes the furthest, 14.58, and I think that's what I had in here. Well, I had 14, 14.58. Um, so that's a 3.1 uh, percent difference. Uh, very interesting. So it looks like bending wise. The theoretical model that we're accustomed to using does agree with what SOLIDWORKS has given us.
Okay, now I'd like to take a look at a torsion. We're going to look at the same cylindrical rod. We're going to put a torque on it of 2,400 inch-pounds. We know the shear modulus for steel is 11.6 megapsi. We know that the stiffness, the torsional stiffness, is G times J over L, where J is the polar second moment of area. The units for K would be inch-pounds per radian. We do know that the torsional stress, a shear stress, is going to be uh, the torque times the radius, or, or the diameter divided by 2, and then divide that by the J, which is equal to 16 times the torque divided by pi d cubed. It turns out we want to keep track of uh, von Mises in this case, and uh, we know if we were to go look at the equation for von Mises in a plane stress scenario like this, it would be uh, von Mises stress would be equal to square root of 3 times that, uh, that shear stress due to torsion. Okay, and then um, after, after we do a little preview of numbers, we're going to go take a look at our SOLIDWORKS FEA. We're going to look at it two different ways here for torsion. We're going to add an extension to uh, on the rod. I, ca I call it the albatross. Uh, something that uh, you could add on to give you the desired loading, or we're going to use a split line, and then of course we'll compare. So taking a look at the numbers here, um, using the same data we had set up for the uniform stress example, uh, we're going to have our torque of 2400. We know our uh, shear modulus, so we can calculate our torsional stiffness if we know our J. It's going to be G times J over L. And of course, our J is for a round solid cross section is pi d to the fourth divided by 32. So uh, that sets that up. And then, of course, my tau is going to be a torque times uh, the radius or d divided by 2 and then divide that by J. So I'm going to be looking for a tau as about 1500 psi. And um, this right here is actually going to be my von Mises stress that I'm kind of going to be looking for. That is uh, 2646 because I take and uh, multiply the tau by a square root of 3. So that's got that one. And then in radians what I do is I take the torque 2400, the T is what I have set up for that cell, and divide it by the, the torsional stiffness and the result will be in radians. And if I want to kind of know what the perimeter is doing, I take that radian and multiply it by the radius, which is d over 2. And I want to do it, I want to show that in mil. So I'm going to take the radians times the radius, d over 2, and multiply it by 1,000. So I'm going to be looking for the perimeter, the periphery of that solid rod at its end to be turning or moving at about 1.3 mils. So let's go see what it really does. Okay, so I've kind of got this already set up, and I want to just discuss this a little bit. So I've got the back end anchored again, and then on the end, I've actually put on this, uh, I call it an albatross, and it was just a way that I could make sure I'm loading it like I want to. So what I did is I put two a pair of 200 pound forces acting equal and opposite on the edges of this rectangle. So basically that's going to create a couple. And the value of the couple is going to be 200 pounds times the distance between them. Which is 12 inches. So 200 pounds times 12 inches is the 2400 inch pounds. So I know that I'm putting the torque that I want uh, at the end. Okay, so now let's, uh, I've already run it. Let's take a look at what the stress is doing for us. Okay, and I've also stepped out a little bit here too to see what I have. I've also put the Von Mises stress in, in uh, a 100 to 3,000 range. You can do that. If you want to play around with that, you can do that with your chart options. 
and you can see that I've not, I'm not using the automatic, I'm using the defined and I've set the low at 100 and the high is 300. So you can see here that radially, I've stepped out a little bit, radially the center is under basically zero stress and then linearly the stress raises till it gets to the perimeter where it's starting to get very red. Let's do some probes and find out what it is out here. So I'm trying to get out here. Let's probe around. Now the Von Mises should be the same around the perimeter. And sometimes it fights you. There we go. All right, so average wise, I've got uh, 2631, let's say, PSI. Um, they're all in the 26 something range. Let's say the average is 2631. Let's go put that in and see how close we are. 2631. So that's a 0.6% relative error. I could probably go around and, and check that a little bit better, but uh, let's uh, let's um, accept that as um, that it's it is true and correct. Um, so on the bending thing, I went in and changed the von Mises to something else, but I don't know that I really have that opportunity here because. Um, the taw that I would have here, I've got an option for taw XY. Uh, let's see what that would do. I'd actually have to change my chart options. Uh, I think we were looking at 1500-ish. So I'm going to go minus 1500 to plus 1500. And that's what taw XY would look like. Let's take a look at what tau ZX would look like. So, as you can see, um, kind of uh, is not uh, convenient to show torsional stress in this way, so that's why I went with the, the other method of uh, von Mises. Okay, let's take a look at displacement next. Okay, for displacement, I've already got it set up here where I'm providing a 0 to 2 mil uh, color chart here, 3D color chart. And I've already stepped out a good bit here, almost uh, from the anchor, almost all the way to the end of, 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 the, of the rod near where it meets up with the albatross. So what I'd like to do here is just to... Do a little probing and see what I what I'm getting in the perimeter. Looks like uh, the perimeter is some green here, so it looks like I'm in the one something mil range. So I'm going to probe around here in a couple of points and see what I get. Okay. Well, I'm getting uh, about 1.3536 for the two that I have. Not exactly sure why it's giving me an average of one point over 1.4 when the min and max are below that. That's a little bit strange. That's something you want to kind of keep an eye out for. But let's take it as 3.0. I'm sorry, 1.36 as our value in mills. Mills, and then let's do. So that's about a 3% difference. That's starting to be a little bit high, um, but still, it's an order of magnitude, it looks good. So, um, anyway, that is um, how we can do the torsional load um, using 
what I call the albatross, just to some extension. Now, of course, um, the extension is not in your design. It's just a way of applying a load to your part so that you know what kind of load you're applying. That's the one way we can do it. Next, we're going to take a look at uh, the split method. Okay, for the split example of uh, torsion, I'm going to reopen my uniaxial or uniform stress uh, on the rod and actually make a change to the external load. I'm going to go in and edit the definition and change it to a torque and then delete that first that face I had applied previously and probably change the torque to the 2400 that we want to apply. Um, but I want to put a split here and I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. I'm going to try to rotate it so I can actually see it better and zoom in and I'm going to create a sketch. I'm going to create a line that is vertical and goes from there to there. So, okay. I'm going to exit sketch. So I've got that sketch ready to go. So now I want that side. And let's see if that works. Create split. Um, looks like it's picked the wrong face here. What's going on? I picked that face. I wanted, really wanted to apply it to the end here. Not what I want. I want that face. There we go. All right, now we're talking. Uh, 2400. Um, the directions I could I could switch that if I wanted to, but I think I'm okay with that. So I think this is making sense. I'm applying it to applying it there. See if it likes that. Please select a reference axis. All right, so it wants me to pick something for that guy. So I'll just pick the same thing, I guess. See if it likes that. 2,400 inch pounds. Let's see. Try that. All right, so now we've got something. Let's, uh, let's try running it. All right, let's see. Rotate it around. Um, I think I had my chart options as maybe a hundred to three thousand, perhaps for the rate for the torsional stress example. Oh, that's looking very, very familiar there. And of course, I can poke around there. If it'll behave, 26, 15 as an average. Looks like the average is trustable this time. 26, 15. Um, so here, 26, 15. Oh, about 1% difference there. You know, maybe I'm not quite on the edge here. I might be, yeah, I'm sort of inside it a little bit. So I was perhaps a little sloppy there. Clear. Let me get let me get one right here on the edge if I can. Twenty six forty seven. Let's go see what that one does. Twenty six forty seven. Hey, look at there. That's right on the money. Okay. Let's look at displacement here for this thing. Um, yeah, getting out here, it's going to be a little tricky as I step out because I'm remember I'm applying my load out there but let's see what we get anyway um, I'm gonna try to do a section here 
and I'm going to do right plane and uh, step out here and as I step out of course the displacement the radial displacement is getting more uh, I'm going to go to like 9 9.9 ish there and try to pick up what it is so I'm going to say OK there and I'm going to do try to do a probe of that area one point three six mils so here's this is just, again strange that the average is not with the one measurement the average should be the measurement one point three six so that's kind of what I had before so again the three point three difference Anyway, there's torsion, and of course we've got, um, in this case, we've got the split, where we didn't add an albatross, so this is a little bit nicer, and it doesn't really affect your design. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at uh, stress concentration. Now we have a theoretical model for various uh, stress concentration examples. For example, we'll take a look at a flat plate with W with a hole D and we'll look at it in tension. The theoretical model that we're accustomed to actually relies on experiments that were done in the 1950s. We're going to take a look at that and we're going to compare it to what SolidWorks is telling us when it runs its uh, FEA. Here's an example out of Shigley where you have figure A15-1 where you have a bar in uh, tension. It's got a transverse hole. The hole is uh, diameter D. The width of the plate is W and the thickness of the plate is T. So it's easy to see that the worst case area is W minus D times T. The nominal stress is sigma naught which is equal to the axial force divided by that worst case or smallest uh, cross-sectional area. The nominal stress is not the highest stress that's in the part. The highest stress is in near the hole that in that stress a peak stress is going to be KT the stress concentration factor times that nominal stress and the KT value it depends on the ratio of the diameter of the hole to the width of the plate. So if I have that value anywhere from 0.1 to 0.8, I can find out what the KT is going to be. For example, 0.05 would give me a KT of about 2.82. And, and if I have a D over a W value of about 0.25, I get a KT of about 2.42 and so forth. Well let's look quickly at a numerical example. I'm going to have a width of two inches. I'm going to have a thickness of a quarter inch and I'm going to put a hole in it of a half an inch. So my D over W is that quarter that I uh, 0.25 that I pulled up earlier and for that value I had a stress concentration factor of 2.42. If I go in and look at what my sigma naught is, that's going to be the force, 2,000 pounds in the example, divided by the width B, uh, B10, minus the D, which is uh, D10, and then I'm also dividing by the thickness T, which is C10. So my nominal stress is 5,300, and then when I go and, and do the concentrated stress or the peak stress, I get um, the uh, stress concentration factor 2.42 times the 5300 and I'm getting about 12.9 kpsi. So that's theoretically what I should be getting. Let's take a look at what SOLIDWORKS has given us. Well I've already set it up. I've got that hole. I've got the plate 6 inches by 2 inches wide, quarter inch thick. Now I've anchored the back side, I'm going to pull on this side, and I'm going to see what happens there. So when I run it, here's what the von Mises stress looks like. And as you can see, 
a lot of it is green right about the, around the 5300, especially in this area that we were kind of expecting at that worst case area. Uh, however, near the hole, we're going to have some red, which is going to peak up pretty high. And I've actually did some chart options here. I actually did some chart options to put it between 0 and 10,000 here. Let's take a look at actually what the normal stress is. Very close to the von Mises because really uh, I should really be dominant here with uh, sigma x because that's what's being applied almost exclusively. So as you can see, I still have that red around the uh, area of the hole. And what I'd like to do is kind of step out, look at a section clip here, and I'd like to look at the right plane. Um, and I've got it set up on center, so that looks good. So if I can rotate it where I can look at it good, you can see what's going on here pretty well. You can see that stress is being concentrated at the hole. Um, this is exactly what the theory tells you, and the FEA is confirming that. A lot of the bulk of the material here the, is still going to be around the 5300 area. Let's actually probe, probe around. Let's do a couple of probes um, on um, the stress right near the hole. Okay. It's kind of tough to get. I want to get right on that edge there. So 12.3 near the edge, 12.36, 12. Point, almost 12.4 um, near that edge. So let's go put that back in here. Uh, 12.4. And that looks like um, about a 3.9 for about a 4. 4% error uh, there. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, very close to what we'd expect. So um, so that's what's happening right there at the stress concentration area where stress is concentrated. Let's probe around maybe down here where we might get that sigma naught. And we're getting uh, we get a couple of hits at about 5,000 and we were kind of expecting about 5,300, um, actually. So um, we're we're within a order of magnitude. We're within uh, where we want to be. You know, five percent on the on the product of the two, and a little bit more perhaps uh, uh, on the um, on the sigma naught. So that is your stress concentration and how it agrees the SOLIDWORKS version of it agrees with the theory. All of the preceding examples that I did were individual parts. The next thing I want to touch briefly on is what to do when you have an assembly. It's a lot more involved than when you just have one part. Uh, SOLIDWORKS basically the mates do not matter when you go do the FEA. The key is actually bonding between parts and there's there are three options you could allow penetration which I've not found too useful uh, you could set it up for no penetration which allows bodies to slip relative to one another or you can use a bonded bonding where there's uh, the parts are basically welded together and as a matter of fact uh, that's what I do here is I actually think of them as welded together and as, as, as a welding example here I um, look at a transverse fillet weld where I actually create a part that looks like a transverse fillet weld and I will bond it I will bond the weld to a bottom plate uh, and the end of another plate so the model theoretically, and we'll get into this when we get into welding, but theoretically the model says that the shear stress is equal to the square root of 2 times the force that you're pulling with divided by the H of, really the H of the weld uh, divided by the length or the depth of the weld. 
So for my SOLIDWORKS example, here's what I've uh, ginned up here is I have two plates. Uh, so it's going to be a lap weld where I've got two fillets, two fillet welds. And actually, when I go in and do the loading, it all should be very familiar. I'm loading it on the edge and I'm anchoring the back edge. So that's what I've done there. The new thing here is uh, bonding and under your component contact, what I've done here is I've, I've, I've selected globally no penetration between any of the bodies. And then, and then what I've done is I've gone in and controlled bonding individually. I actually pick the faces that are touching, and that's how I control that contact and assign a bonded contact between the faces. And the same thing here, I've selected that weld, the bottom face of that weld, and the face that where it's... Uh, going to be welded together on that bottom lap plate. The third uh, component contact for bonding is from the bottom weld and the bottom plate. And then the fourth one is between the bottom weld and the top plate. So you set all that up and then you just run it as you normally would. Okay, and uh, here's the results of showing Von Mises here. And you can really see where the parts are bonded together. The welds are bonded, so there's no, there's, there's no stress discontinuity between where the fillet welds are and where the plates are at those locations here, 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 and here. And you can see where the slip can occur here uh, between the two bodies as it's shown as a line. As far as the shear stress goes, um, I took a look at um, what the value should be and it should be about maximum of 800 PSI and um, that is about what I'm getting here um, when I probed around. So it does look like the theory agrees with what SOLIDWORKS is reporting. So, so that's how you handle an assembly of parts. Uh, bonding is going to be the key. The part, there are going to be some parts which are going to need to slip relative to one another and, and, and the physics of the problem dictate that. You want to put no penetration for those parts. Other parts are going to be bonded together. Those are, are also, in those parts, you'll want to add the actual weld beads uh, in there, and those are the things that are bonded together to the to to each other and to the to the parts that are being welded. When you do this, uh, gaps can be problematic. You you really need to get have things touching so that they can uh, they can slip relative to one another. So that's uh, something to watch out for when you try to do this. So in summary, we've taken a look at uh, the theory behind uniform normal stress and also what SOLIDWORKS provides, and we've shown there's good correlation. We've looked at the theory of bending stress and what SOLIDWORKS provides, and there's good correlation. We've looked at torsional stress theory, what it provides, and we've looked at it from, in SOLIDWORKS in two different ways. Uh, we've looked at stress concentration and shown that there's good agreement between theory and what SOLIDWORKS provides. And then we took a look at uh, assembly, an assembly of parts uh, and, and paid particular attention to bonding. And then we showed that, yes, there's still a good correlation between the theory and the SOLIDWORKS. So anyway, uh, those are some things that uh, tie your theory over to your SOLIDWORKS, and I hope you've enjoyed that today.